Hello, welcome back to the Charm YouTube channel. Today we are talking again with Kamal and he's going to tell us about how DigitalOcean adopted Charm for their doctal tool and their best tips and tricks for improving the developer experience for their doctal users. Let's get into it. I have a huge passion for user experience in general and it's part of the reason I like our platform. Like we tried and, and simplify things as much as possible, but you know, there's a there's definitely a balance to be made, making the user experience as simple as possible and like the happy path people tend to focus on. But whenever there's like an error or something, it's easy to miss designing and considering that. If there's like an error, yes, you can print an error, show that to the user, make sure it's something that means something to them, not like some internal code. But also if yeah. it's possible, like tell them how they can resolve it. Like, even if it's just a link to documentation, that's a great first step. Just like help them and guide them through things. And it just, it overall was in a like, you know, pretty good user experience and definitely helps to have pretty, you know, colors and emojis everywhere. Huge fan. <laughs> yeah. <all> that. <laughs> like that was something that I found really appealing when I, I started working with Bubble Tea before I started working at, uh, at Charm. It was like through my project that Charm found me actually, but oh, wow, I awesome. was like, yeah. I was like, oh, this is perfect. It just looks nice out of the box. Like, I don't need to do anything with making it look pretty. Like, I just need to, like, tie these components together. So, <laughs> love that. And uh, was it was it Bubble Tea that you came across first? Or was it a different... Yes, yeah. it was Bubble Tea and Flip Gloss. So, like, we get a lot of people in the community saying that um, they're like, okay, I love using it for my side projects. How do I pitch it to my team, to my manager, so that I can justify being paid to work on a Bubble Tea application? So yeah. very curious how you led that at DigitalOcean. Mm -hmm. So for, for some context, um, the, where we recently used some of the Charm projects at DigitalOcean is um, our Doctal CLI. So Doctal mm -hmm. is our official CLI for interacting with your DigitalOcean account. Mm -hmm. And if you've used that platform, you'll you'll probably be familiar with it, but um, one of the things that, you know, one of my favorite things about App Platform is the fact that you can just give us your code and we'll figure out how to build it. Um, we actually use mm -hmm. the cloud native build packs ecosystem and tooling for that, which is really cool, by the way. Um, really love working with it. And the other feature that, you know, I, I really enjoy is the auto detection aspect. So basically we try and maintain like a zero config you know, approach to everything. So yes, you give us your code, we know how to build it, like what tools to use, but we also try and suggest like usable initial configuration so that f for the mm -hmm. most part, you don't have to even configure anything. You know, all the defaults will be preset and ready to go. We wanted to bring that to the local environment. Um, instead of having to go through like the entire G GitOps flow of, you know, pushing your code to Git and then having mm -hmm. App Platform build it for you and deploy it, which is, you know, it's cool if you're building a production app. But if you're developing mm -hmm. and testing, you know, iterating on changes that you make, the ductile app dev command lets you do all that locally. It's like a one, you know, single entry point to building and running your app locally. Um, the entire build platform is orchestrated also on your machine. So nothing's being uploaded, which is very fast. We wanted to also, you know, like make sure that that experience is as easy as possible for, for users. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. With terminal tools, for the most part, like inputs are just flags, like CLI flags. Mm -hmm. And we didn't want users to, you know, run a command and be like, oh, you're missing this input. And they have to run the help command again. And, you know, we wanted to make it a very like intuitive user experience where you don't even have to know what the flags are. Yes, that's an option. But if you just get started, like literally run Doctal App Dev Build, it'll launch you through this, you know, Bubble Tea interactive program where if there's a missing input, instead of like actually erring out and saying, oh, this is missing, try, try running again, we just prompt the user for it. And instead of like having the user go and look those up and then come back, mm -hmm. like we try to integrate as much of it as possible. I'm in my project directory here, and if I list mm -hmm. out the contents, there's a API directory and a front end directory. Mm -hmm. And you know, if I look in the API, it's a Go program, has an entry point and some dependencies. And front end is 
it's a static, you know, front end for it. Yeah. What I can do is I can run Doctor app dev build. It'll ask me like which component to build. So I can choose whichever mm -hmm. one I want. Let's say I want to do the API. So I select it, hit enter. You know, it's presenting me with details about what it's building. So, you know, showing me the logs is another like double T component where I can, you know, scroll up and down and view the logs. You know, it's just- That looks this, great. Great job. Thank you. Really uh, got some help from like the, the bubbles component library, which is really, really- So convenient. nice, right? And, you know, it's yeah. great out of the box. So huge fan, 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks. Um, so yeah, like, after building the app and presented with, you know, a summary of things using, you know, like lip gloss for some, some cool, cool styling. So once it's built, I have like instructions on how to run it and where to access it afterwards. Mm -hmm. So like, for example, I can just run this build app, the one that I just built. So I spin up a, oh God, a new it. terminal. <laughs> <laughs> I'll curl the, the endpoint that it's listening on and, you know, it's just, it's instantly running and accepting requests. Nice. I'm really excited for you know, it's Doctor App Dev to be released mm. because it greatly simplifies the development like iteration. It'll use the exact same environment that App Platform would use. So you don't have to worry mm. about like different dependencies being installed or, you know, the operating system and you know, all of that. It's it's just, you know, identical to what your production app would would go through. So when it came to um when it came to talking to your team about I guess not even just bubble tea specifically, but adding a TUI, was it like a pretty hard sell or an easy sell for, for you to basically just say, Hey, it's better UX actually, you know, Yeah. what was the, <laughs> what was the strategy? So, um, you know, like the, the UX aspect of it is very nice and very cool. Yeah. And, um, the, like the other part of it is really just the, like the ease of, I guess the learning curve and the accessibility of the tool, because you know using mm -hmm. interactive components, it's a lot easier to get started. I guess maybe like one thing you mentioned is this local dev um, tooling came out of a wider developer developer experience focus focus initiative. Um, oh, so, okay. Like this is. You know, we wanted to improve the experience of developing your app that's going to run on app platform. So if you can do it all locally, mm -hmm. you know, it's, it's much more convenient and it greatly reduces the like pain of having to push up a change, wait for it to build and so on. Um, especially when yeah. like, you change the line, you have to wait, go through that entire process. But now you can just do it in yeah. like, what, 15 seconds was built. Yeah, that was really fast. Yeah. And, and it was easy. It looked very, like, very smooth. And like, you, you wouldn't have to read the docs to figure out how to use it. It's like, okay, let me choose this. And then mm -hmm. it builds it for you. And then it's like, hey, here's, here's what you do now. Yeah. I love that. Did you, so had you built something already with Bubble Tea before using it? Or, and your, your whole team writes Go, right? Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. So it's a bunch of Go developers who, probably enjoy nerdy <laughs> things, including bubble tea. <laughs> yeah. Love it. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I hadn't used bubble tea before. Um, I knew I wanted to use it because I mean, who doesn't? It's, it's a great tool. I it's wanted so any excuse right? to use it. And it also, yeah. you know, it, it does, at the end of the day, it does help us achieve our goals with the like, developer experience focus. Mm -hmm. For people who had worked on this, we, none of us had used um, bubble tea before. Um, so we kind of mm -hmm. dived right into it, and again, like the the bubble t the bubbles um, library was very helpful, and mm -hmm. um, just seeing all of those like community projects linked in the readme's and the examples of um, you know how things are done with you know bubble t lip gloss and all those tools, like it was it was very helpful to draw inspiration from them and um, nice just get get a, get like a starting to build an understanding of how the model works. Yeah, yeah, totally. I think seeing examples is always super helpful. So like big shout out to all the community members who have created stuff with Bubble yes. Tea, <laughs> who inspire other developers to create things with Bubble Tea and help them learn how to do it. Were there any points of friction throughout like any of the process of you building this project in just in working with Bubble Tea? 
most of it is really just you know trying to learn this new technology that we haven't used before yeah. and also the um I believe, if i'm remembering right it follows the like airline view model elm architecture, elm architecture. yeah functional programming yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's that was that was new to me also i it wasn't initially clear to me how the message loop was was constructed and like if i'm embedding a sub component yeah. I have to, you know, make sure to handle its updates and propagate things across. For the Doctal integration, because Doctal is a, you know, it's a pre-existing CLI. It's not a brand new tool that we created for for this project. So mm -hmm. we also had to find a way to, you know, slowly integrate it into the code base, while also opening mm -hmm. up the like possibility for other teams and other commands in Doctal to use to use. Um, these new interactive flows, we had to maintain support for non-interactive usage of Doctal. Because like one of the the uses for it is, you know, as a scripting, like in a scripting pipeline. So all of these prompts can be passed in as, as flags um, or config file values. Mm -hmm. So real quick, like when I run Doctal app dev build, it lists out my components. And right mm -hmm. now it relies on the app spec to do that. And what an app spec is, is a declarative manifest of the app. So kind of like how you yeah. um, you know, define a Kubernetes manifest, like a deployment or a Terraform config and so on. It basically mm -hmm. describes the desired state of your app. So if I mm -hmm. um, go into the .do directory and print out the app.yaml file, this is actually the abstract for this project. So you can see there's um, a service named API, a static site named frontend, and you know the source server, they're located within the file tree. Right now, Doctal App Dev relies on this to function, but let's say I remove this mm -hmm. file and just move it up a directory where it can find it, and I run App Dev Build again. It'll tell me that okay, I couldn't find an app spec, but an app spec is required to start a local build, and then you know it it'll try to oh, tell me like what else I can do to address this. So. That's I could great. Do, okay, I'll just like the aspect. I have one, or I ran Docker in the wrong yeah. directory, and just, you know, rerun it in the right directory. Um, the other thing mm -hmm. that I can do is, you know, I'd like to link an app from my DigitalOcean Cloud account and use its aspect. So if you already have an app mm -hmm. running on your account, you can like borrow its aspect and test, you know, use it to build your local local changes, local project. So if I select this, yeah. it actually list the apps on my account and I can go through yeah. these lists and you know choose which app that I'd like to link. And when I do this it actually I cool. canceled it. But if I go through it it'll actually link the app to my project. So I wouldn't have to, you know, manually go and find the ID of the app and run like a link command uh -huh. and so on. Um, so that's also that's so nice. Yeah, it, it, it was like part of the you know the small little things that you could do to just make the, the experience nicer. Yeah, that's like really nice. Like I don't know if I've I don't know if I've used very many dev tools where not only it gives you like a good error message, but it also gives you solutions to the error that you can choose from, and then it does that for you. Like that's crazy. Right. Is there anything else that you wanted to share with? the charm community either about your experience or if you have any um, anything that you're building that you wanted to highlight you know it took some strategizing to figure out is multiple different teams work on Doctal, and not everyone is familiar with charm tooling and mm -hmm. like i still want everyone who contributes to it like not even you know digital ocean employees but also because like Doctal is an open source project so anyone who contributes to it I'd like them to also be able to make use of all of these tools um, without learning the entire, you know, model architecture of, of Bubble Tea apps. So what we did mm -hmm. is actually we created um, an internal component library. We basically nice. created like wrappers for like a lot of these flows that we have. So like prompting for confirmation, mm -hmm. like we abstracted that out to like a confirm dot, you know, prompt <laughs> type of model that, yeah. you know, it, you just call it, it creates a whole bubble tea app, prompts user for input, does everything, and you get the, the results back. I guess the, the thing that I wanted to call out is if you're integrating this to like a, a code base where you know others will have to others contribute and would be nice for them to be able to use these tools, maintaining like a layer of abstraction 
and it's highly dependent on your project, right? Because you do things differently than other, than the way other Bubble Tea users would do. So it, it has to be somewhat mm -hmm. tailored to your own project. You know, providing that easy to use interface for these for these flows be very helpful. So. That's a great suggestion. Thanks for sharing that, and shout out to the uh, DigitalOcean team for doing something like that. That's awesome.